irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is The Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. The theme of the week has been volatility. Interesting to note, COVID vaccination spike as several states confirm Omicron cases. Omicron started, I guess, last Friday, the day after Thanksgiving is when it started hitting the headline news. And by one week later, we're now confirming it in five U.S. states. Scientists investigate heavily mutated strain. World Health Organization has said COVID variant is detected in 38 countries. Early indications is that it's wildly more contagious. No early indications on whether or not the vaccines work, the boosters work. The anti- antiviral pills from Merck and Pfizer work. We don't know yet. Hopefully it all falls into place. Job growth in the United States disappointed in November with a gain of just 210,000 jobs despite high, high hopes for 573,000. We missed by a lot. The labor market is out of whack. It doesn't feel right. A more encompassing measure of unemployment that includes discouraged workers and those holding part-time jobs for economic reasons dropped even more, tumbling 7.8% from 8.3%. There's a chronic labor shortage. The underlying momentum of the labor market strong, but this month there's uncertainty. Didn't add enough jobs at a time when we should be adding more jobs. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said he expects the Central Bank's policy committee to discuss at its meeting this month, stepping up the level at which it's tapering. Very interesting right now. (laughs) That's all I'm going to tell you is like, Reading these numbers on the fly this morning, um, dramatic. DocuSign, a company that did really, really well in the pandemic because we didn't really want to sign documents in person, down 40% this morning after the company gave weak guidance. What's going on? Are we COVID locked down or are we not COVID locked down? Is our labor market back? Is it not back? That's kind of the way it feels this morning now. DD shares have plummeted on news that they're going to delist from the United States and just become a Hong Kong-based institution. China is stepping up their game. They want nothing to do with U.S. capitalism. They want to do everything with Chinese capitalism or Chinese communism, commu capitalism. Whatever form they're putting out there, they want nothing to do with ours. can't say that it's insane what China's doing. They've been cracking down. They've been flexing their muscle in an attempt to try to keep big Chinese companies in line when the United States were like, eh, Apple, you do whatever you want. Eh, Google, you do whatever you want. Facebook, Microsoft, do whatever you want. We'll fine you on occasion when it, it looks a little odd. But those fines won't equal 10 days of income for you. So it won't be that much of a penalty, will it? China's a little bit more real. When they discipline their companies, they discipline their companies. When their millionaires get out of hand, they disappear. When their billionaires get out of hand, they disappear. Don't think that's SmackDown for you, but I do find that kind of interesting. Oh, let's see what else do we have out there. Alec Baldwin's in the news. I kind of feel he's an obnoxious celebrity. I know, I know there's a tragedy of someone died at the hands of a gun that was fired in his hand, but he doesn't feel any guilt over the rust shooting. A headline that I don't need. Mark Cuban's bought a 77 acre town in Texas. He's an interesting one. Why buy a town? Just out of curiosity. Um, he bought a town called Mustang. 
own your own town said the billboard and he goes out and spends money on his own town okay that's what i'm going to say on that yesterday we had up markets across the board the nasdaq the sp 500 the dow jones industrial average bitcoin was higher delta airlines was a big winner up 9.2 percent the airlines are crazy inefficient when we fear omicron the markets rally when we don't in the airlines Airlines do well, like up 9% on a day when the market was up 1.4%. That's just inefficient. You remember the 1990s with Girls Gone Wild? Now on DVD, Girls Gone Wild, Spring Break. Stocks Gone Wild is what we're watching right now, and it's, it's the holiday season version, right? Congress passed a short-term spending bill to avoid a government shutdown this weekend. Jobs report day was disappointing. On occasion, I get a little bit excited, a little bit nervous when I talk about billionaires. Ray Dalio is one of those billionaire founders of a big equity firm. World's largest hedge fund. So when he opens his mouth, you tend to listen. He's talking about China. He's talking about the U.S. markets. He's talking about being overbought. Dalio has been a longtime China bull. Bridgewater, his company, raised $1.2 billion for its third fund in the country. Bridgewater is one of the many U.S. firms being challenged recently about their business ventures in China. A lot going on in China right now with the Olympics and human rights, with capitalism or pseudo-capitalism slash communism. Um, It's not stock friendly. I own no specific stocks in China. Certainly, I own companies that do business in China like Nike. Um, But I would not want direct exposure right now because you can't tell what's going to happen. President Joe Biden revealed a new winter COVID plan yesterday, and it doesn't seem all that, that how shall we say, uh, innovative. Ah, we're just going to go about our business. More mask mandates on trains, planes, buses, transports. But uh, problematic, to say the least. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing more. Find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. A straightforward approach to managing your money. The Rob Black Show. Invest in what is really important. Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. Are you concerned with financial planning, tax planning, managing your investments, or just planning your retirement? Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, EP has your financial future in mind. Learn more by visiting robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. Tesla's selling a $1,900 quad bike for children. It's sold out. Tesla's website added a product called the Cyber Quad for Kids on Wednesday. The product description said it has a top speed of 10 miles per hour. It's suitable for kids aged eight and above. $1,900 shipping in two and four weeks from now. Orders not guaranteed to arrive prior to the holidays. Um, it strangely, oddly resembles their upcoming Cybertruck. And again, it just adds to the lore that is what's going on in his brain of Elon Musk over at Tesla. It's a full-size two-seater ATV called the Cyberquad. He can be purchased alongside the truck. Um, it was supposed to ship in 2021, the Cybertruck. Production's been pushed into 2022. You might remember famously that they threw a brick at the Cybertruck's window to show that the glass wouldn't break, and sure enough, it broke. The product innovation that comes out of, or the just the gag gifts. Do you remember when Tesla came up with a flamethrower? You're like, what's that about? And then a bottle of tequila, and you're like, what's that about? Just, we keep talking about it. 
And I think that's what that's about. Huge $2.6 billion green hydrogen project planned for Europe. I've never been excited by hydrogen. It is one of those investment themes that kind of comes and goes. The Biden administration has set aside money for part of his infrastructure plan to go towards hydrogen. It is a clean energy burn. In theory, it creates water as a byproduct. It's just never been able to do it on scale or profitability. I pay attention to breakthroughs like what we're seeing out of Spain today with a multi-billion euro investment. But until it comes to fruition, it's really, really tough to, to say, let's invest in this. It's too green. Um, and by green, I don't mean ecologically speaking. I'm talking uh, newness. It's too raw. The IMF is urging the Federal Reserve to speed up monetary policy to try to tame inflation. I do believe that 2021 was a year where we learned about transitory inflation, and then we learned about, whoops, it's probably not transitory. I've had guests on the show like CFP Chad Burton, who goes, it doesn't really feel transitory. And I've interviewed people on my YouTube channel, check it out at Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show, that have talked about the Fed's probably behind on this. And inflation's the boogeyman. If you've listened to this show for 20 plus years or even two plus years, you know that I don't really fear Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th. Big dude shows up in my house with a machete and a hockey mask. I'm okay. I don't really fear Freddy Krueger. I once worked on a radio station called KRGR. This is KRGR signing off. And that didn't spook me. But inflation's the boogeyman. When I once said I needed a million dollars to retire, I was an 18-year-old man. And by the time I was a 35-year-old man, I said, I need somewhere between two to four million dollars to afford living where I want to live, to afford traveling where I want to travel, to afford eating what I want to eat. That's my idea of retirement. But every few years, I'm, I'm upping that number because of inflation. Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said the central bank could step up its tapering efforts and that this would be discussed at a meeting this month. After we speed up tapering, we're going to start talking about raising interest rates. The World Health, uh, not the World Health Organization, excuse me, the IMF, International Monetary Fund, said the United States needs to speed things up because your consumer demand is driving prices higher. Yesterday, I introduced you a term called bracketing, where you buy two couches instead of one. You have both of them delivered, and you send one of them back. Knowing you're going to send one of them back, you're still junking out the system by ordering two and taking one away from your neighbor who would have taken the other one. You got the black and white one. He wanted the black one. You keep the white one. You send back the black one, and it slows everything down. Stocks are heading for a losing week this week on Omicron freers, I'm not surprised by that, are you? As this fourth wave hits the United States, we're now one week out of Thanksgiving. And one week from now, as the virus has mutated and grown inside of our bodies, as we've traveled across the country and spread the disease, who's going to end up in the emergency room? Will it be the non-vaccinated only, or will it be the vaccinated and non-vaccinated? Or will it be no one? No one goes to the emergency room in the next 10 days. Markets go way higher. If the non-vaccinated go into the hospital in the next 10 days, market goes lower. If the vaccinated and the non-vaccinated go in the hospital, stock market goes dramatically lower. That's Really, really oversimplification, over easy analysis. But I don't think it's bad. 
Las Vegas Sands is off 2% today. Delta Airlines down 1.2. Norwegian Cruise Lines down 2.7%. Carnival Cruise Lines down 3%. Vaccine leader Moderna is a big winner today after basically upsetting the market this week with the CEO saying, you know what? Our vaccines may not work as effectively against this new variant. It's been a year. Flus mutate. That's their job. Viruses are, their job is to survive and change. Cancer's job is to survive and change and basically break down your good, healthy body. It is not surprising that a vaccine is going to need to be updated. It is a surprise that we're in a fourth wave and we don't necessarily feel we're ahead of the curve on it anymore. We're questioning it. New York officials have confirmed five cases of COVID Omicron variant in New York City metro areas, and they're saying it's traveling. So it's not a traveler coming from Egypt or a traveler coming from South Africa or a traveler coming from Europe. It's now being spread from person to person. It's out. Genie's out. Not going back in the bottle. Genie's like, uh-uh. Been in there too long. November's jobs report showed slower than expected job creation. Um, again, the labor market is to say that it's having a fit is probably more correct than not. It's not right. Two years ago, I could have told you what a healthy economy looks like from a jobs market today. It's like there, there's some lumpiness in these numbers. IMAX is thriving right now as the movie theater industry struggles overall. Um, IMAX has had its best October ever. The reopening trade of movie theaters, AMC gets all the headlines. IMAX gets none of them. AMC has the, they're going out of business tag. IMAX doesn't. IMAX business model sort of shields it from some of the issues that traditional movie theaters face during the pandemic, such as shorter theatrical windows and straight to streaming releases. There's a premiumization of theatrical experience gives IMAX a unique advantage. So IMAX has grown quickly in China. It surpassed the United States last year as the world's biggest theatrical market. Um, The share of the IMAX market grew from 2% to 3%. So it's a really small amount of numbers. But exponentially, it's, it's very powerful. Disney Plus has released 13 Marvel movies in the IMAX format. Um, and that's going to continue to grow. So I did a little bit of research yesterday on AMC. Like It's had just a phenomenal year because of meme stock. <clears throat> but when you looked at Cinemark, <clears throat> not so much. And we look at IMAX, not so much. Next year at this time, we're going to be sitting down, hopefully, fingers crossed, watching Avatar 2. I didn't like Avatar 1. I think I'm the only person who was bored by it. I see you. Yeah, there was something to be said for the colorful palette that was presented to us. But to me, it just felt like a fish out of water story. Wasn't all that technologically impressive to me. But next year at this time... We're going to get Avatar 2. And then the year after that, we're going to get Avatar 3. And the year after that, we're going to get Avatar 4. Are you ready for so much Avatar that you're going to want to vomit? I am not ready for it. But IMAX is. Is that a catalyst that you're willing to invest in? For me, it's a little distant. It's uh, not quite as tangible. I know it's coming. Coming to an IMAX theater near you. See Avatar is supposed to be seen in glorious IMAX revelations like eh. it's almost too obvious for me. Maybe I'm giving you a nugget. Maybe I'm giving you a bone. I don't know. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Find me at robblackshow.com. Don't miss an episode of The Rob Black Show. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. A personal financial plan with custom investment advice. That's why Rob Black has partnered with EP Wealth Advisors. 
With over $12 billion in assets under management and more than 80 financial professionals at the helm, BP Services were built with you in mind. How can they help you? Find out at robblackshow.com. robblackshow.com. DocuSign dumped on earnings. It's been a long time since I've owned a stock that's down 40% in one day. It's been a long time. It fell 28% in after hours. The company's revenue guidance came in under expectations on DocuSign. The company anticipated 557 to 563 million, below the expectations of 575 million. It's not all numbers at times. It's that the growth is slowing. The company appreciated enormously in 2020 as we pulled forward demand. It eclipsed where it should have gone and it overshot. NVIDIA announced its intent to acquire a company called Arm Holdings in 2020 of September. Arm Holdings is a company that makes CPU technologies. It is a big IP kind of deal, intellectual property. The deal is not going through in Europe, and the United States' very own regulators are saying it's not a good idea. NVIDIA is too powerful in the GPU to get into the CPU kind of stifling competition smell to it. NVIDIA could influence ARM to stop producing valuable IP for the rest of the tech world, the rest of the world. It could reduce competition. It could ultimately result in reduced product quality, reduced innovation, higher prices, less choice. NVIDIA is acting like this is no big deal, which is kind of interesting to me because I don't get it. I've never seen an acquisition so scrutinized in a company go, eh, we don't care. Now, I understand NVIDIA is kind of got a lot going on right now. They're wildly succeeding with their GPUs in artificial intelligence, in cloud technologies, in graphical power for augmented reality and virtual reality, the metaverse world, in their semiconductors that can produce Bitcoin and mine it. But Qualcomm, Apple, MediaTek, and Samsung all do licensing technologies with ARM technologies. And it just seems um, that the regulators don't want to shut down the open licensing model. The best way I can explain ARM holdings to someone who is not in the industry at all, it's a tough one. They're kind of a patent company. Um, but a legit patent company. They're not like saying, oh, we own anything that says the word telecommunication. There are companies out there like that. (laughs) I'm looking at you, Qualcomm. Um, I don't have an opinion on ARM Holdings and Qualcomm and uh, NVIDIA. Just, it's not my thing. It's kind of funny today because there's a podcast out there by a guy named Jim Jeffries, a comedian called I don't know a lot about that. That's his whole podcast. And he's like, he does a topic where he brings on like a gene data technology scientist who's sequencing the human genome and the pig genome. And he's going to make super pig human. And his whole concept is, I don't know anything about this. So he brings on an expert to talk to him about it. It's a different topic every week. And he tries to infuse humor into it. Good idea for an app. Uh, good idea, in my opinion, for a podcast. Grab, which is Singapore-based super app. Super app is something you're going to hear more and more about in 2022. Grab started out as a ride-hailing platform in 2012, but has since branded into everything from food delivery to digital payments and investments. It is a Southeast Asia super app. It's known as the Uber of Southeast Asia. It's got a whopping valuation of over $40 billion. They're trying to combine ride hailing with delivery and payments. It's just demonstrated so far durable growth, even during the pandemic. Company has not turned a profit yet. 
But the more vertical you can go, the more Wall Street's paying attention right now. Kroger. Night Ranger once came out with the song Motoring, where you drive up and down uh, city street and you kind of look at the girls and look at the boys and you whistle at them. You kind of motor up and down. Krogering is the idea of going to the grocery store and going up and down aisles and potentially hitting on the members of the opposite sex when you're in college. Kroger beat on top and bottom lines. Shares up 11%. You know, rarely it happens that you look at a company like a Kroger and go, wow, that's up 11%. Double digits. That's crazy in, in the sense that it's a grocery store company. It's not like they came out with Kroger 2.0. They don't have a cloud angle, right? Like you don't see that. It, it's it's well known elsewhere in the world of earnings. Ulta Beauty up four and a half percent after reporting record sales and earnings. Um, it seems to be a play on the Kardashians. When the Kardashians come out with new makeup, when the Kardashians come out with new product. They seem to debut it in Ulta Beauty salons. And I don't know how much driving you've done in the last five years, but if you've driven any stretch of major highway and you see the strip malls on the side, typically there's a Target in one or a Walmart in the other. If you look right next to it, there's a Best Buy usually, right? Probably a BJ's restaurant. Yum, right? Pizza. But sometimes you'll see an Ulta Beauty and you're like, what do they do? makeup and you're like i wonder why they need a big old warehouse size building to do makeup and i don't get it either but it is what they it is what it is 737 max is flying again in china so it, it appears that boeing is in the right place at the right time as far as product goes but they still have this pandemic issue to become an epidemic from a pandemic and then we'll be okay but they're getting there. Good for Boeing. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, invest in more. Find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. The Rob Black Show is brought to you by EP Wealth. Learn more about EP's unique approach to managing wealth at robblackshow.com. I'm Rob Black talking all things financial money, investing in more. Thank you for listening to the show. <clears throat> One of the headlines that kind of bummed me out this morning was that Google delays the return to the office amid Omicron uncertainty. The variant appears to be infecting people and reinfecting people at three times the rate of previous strains, according to a preliminary study out of South Africa. Um, and it just, it, I want to stop and say, good job, America, good job, US, good job, world. We're pushing two years now that I haven't been on the TV set. And yet I still work with Daria and I still work with James and radio. I still have my producer. I, I, I haven't really been to work in two years. We're talking 21 months at this point in time. And life goes on. I think we've done a pretty good job world of adapting on, on the fly. We've been very Darwinian. We've evolved. Evolution's a thing. Some companies have evolved into glorious, beautiful animals, and some have evolved, and then they couldn't maintain that form. You can look at companies like DocuSign and Peloton and go, whoa. <clears throat> But when Google says they're delaying the return to the office amid uncertainty, I'm like, ah, oh, seriously? In the end, it's no big deal for me. Um, I don't mind wearing a mask. It's no, it's no stress. It's, it doesn't, I don't have problems breathing. I don't, you know, I have to take a flight later this year, five hours. I'm not stressed about it. I'm not, a mask isn't going to kill me. A virus can kill me, but a mask isn't. And I don't mind giving up that freedom per se. But isn't this a funny thing, how well we've all done? All things considered, there's a lot more Karen moments in the world. 
which is not good to be named Karen. Talk about an unfortunate name. But I throw that down in large part because no one ever saw this coming. And it's the expect the unexpected. It's, it's true to life every single time. If you had told me there was going to be a pandemic and we we're going to be shut down, if Bill Gates said 10 years ago, there's going to be a pandemic and people are going to die and people getting on planes will kill each other. And it's, it's horrible. I would have said, oh, I don't want to be involved in the stock market when that happens. But guess what? Stock market had a great run. It's almost as if we cheat when things get tough. Our government bails out the stock market. And our government, in this case, being the Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve can lower interest rates and help the job market, help the cost of borrowing, help you know stimulate risk-taking. But at the same time, when you do that and you stimulate inflation, that's not a stimulation that you like. You know, a little tickling is good. Too much tickling is awful. It's torture. The Federal Reserve has tickled the economy too much. And my home price is ridiculously overvalued. It's overinflated. It's been over tickled. Same thing with my stock market, my 401k. I started this year thinking I was wealthy. By the end of the year, I'm, I, I, it's like ridiculous. I'm like, you can take this job and shove it. I don't care. What I made this year in the stock market would take me 10 years to make in a career. That's too much stimulation. And whether you're a sex addict, a cocaine addict, whether you're an alcoholic, whatever it is you're addicted to, there comes a point where it's too much. And we're addicted to too much stimulus right now. And inflation showing its head, and we need a period of going sideways or down to cool off inflation, to cool off the horniness, to cool off the desire to drink, to cool off the desire to be high. We, we need just a, let's get some perspective. Will it happen? I don't know. But Wall Street kind of wants it to happen. Video games have enjoyed a pandemic era renaissance. Unlike Peloton and DocuSign, I think video games can, can come through this pretty well. Of course, the comparisons are going to be tough. but. Video games also had a perk during the pandemic that Zuckerberg got a, how shall we say, overly stimulated about the metaverse. He changed his name of his company from Facebook to metaverse or meta companies. You know, a company that could do really well in the metaverse, and I haven't talked about this yet, clearly Roblox. I've talked about that. You know, that's a, a show favorite. NVIDIA clearly is going to do well with the metaverse because we're going to need a lot of graphical power to like, if we want to live like the movie Avatar, it's going to be a lot of computing power. Avatar is the story of a guy in a wheelchair who goes to space and suddenly he gets put in a computer body and he can walk, he can fly, he can shoot guns, he can do things that he can no longer do as a man in a wheelchair. There's a company that I've been noodling through for the last couple of days, last couple of weeks. That is a metaverse play. It's really not an obvious one, but of course it is. Nintendo. They came out with earnings last month, and I finally got to the earnings call, and I kind of got to their, their information, their slide deck recently. It's 48 slides, 48 pages. They had a massive pandemic hit, which I still don't understand. There's video games that I don't understand, but I have to go with. Can anyone explain Animal Crossing to me? It's a metaverse in itself. The game has virtual currency. It's got costumes. It's got online features that allow gamers to interact with friends on a personally curated kind of level, which is kind of the idea of a metaverse. I, it's one of the many ideas of metaverse. In the metaverse, I can be anyone I want to be. In real life, I'm a nobody, but in the metaverse, I can be Hulk Hogan. Sure, why not? You betcha. I can be the big holster. 
And it could be my alter ego. It could be my character inside that, that wants to get on being expressive. Nintendo is well-positioned. What did they do this year? They launched a higher priced model that has a better screen of their Nintendo Switch. It sold 93 million units since 2017. And they came out with a higher priced version of it and it's doing quite well. Now, again, they're getting hit with supply chain woes and semiconductor shortages. There's, you know, going to be a problem with the supply chain. Go look for a switch on eBay. They're priced well above retail. I told that to my kids. You can sell your old switch if you want for more than we paid for it. And you can buy a new switch. And they're like, oh, no, I don't really want to sell my old one, but can we get the new one? My kids are hoarders. But very interesting momentum for switch coming in the next 12 to 24 months. And Nintendo, I really, really wish Apple would buy Nintendo. They have the cash. It's a vertical that I'm, I'm, I would pee myself with happiness if it happened. Um, because it makes sense and I predicted it, but eh, not for sale as of yet. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter, Rob Black Show, YouTube, Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black, talking metaverse and more. Irreverent, over the top, and smart as a whip. This is the Rob Black Show. So I am not in retirement, but I do work with a certified financial planner. I have a planning call later today at 2 p.m. with my tax accountant and my financial planner, talking in year-end strategies, making sure we're maxing out what we need to max out. It's interesting that I'm not in retirement is how I started this segment. And one of the things I want to talk about is what a great year we've had. If you're in retirement, one of the mistakes I find a lot of people make and it's unfortunate is that they're not very deft. They're not very, uh, they don't have a nice touch when it comes to understanding how intricately soft and subtle the art of living in retirement is. I'm going to be talking taxes today, health savings accounts, uh, taking capital gains early in case the Biden administration raises capital gains tax. Things like that. I've got a big capital gain in Apple. I've got a big capital gain in a business. Um, I've got big capital gains in homes. We're going to be talking some strategies along those lines. Two months ago, it looked like the Biden administration wanted to pull in $4 trillion and capital gains is going to be a big loser that they're going to have to raise rates to help pay for some of those costs. That tone has softened, but that didn't change my resolve to look at the issues. One of the mistakes people make is being almost too static. So we've had a huge year on Wall Street. You might be in retirement age. Notice how I started the segment saying I'm not in retirement. But if I were, I would be meeting with my financial planner today, talking about taking a bigger required minimum distribution because of the gains. When you take required minimum distributions, you pay taxes on them. Do I want to be taxed in retirement with a gain or do I want to be taxed in retirement when I'm taking money out, uh, maybe at a loss when the, it's a down year? Clearly you want to sell assets high, even if you have to pay taxes on it. Now, again, this is where it gets complicated. I'm going to say, that's for me. I'd rather pay taxes on an up 20% year, pull some of my required minimum distributions out, get it over with and let the rest sit and grow. So you got a chance to fill up your tax bracket right now. And some people should do it. If you're in this situation of retirement and you're trying to figure out your required minimum distribution this year, because you have a 401k, a 403b, and the government of the United States wants you to pull out X amount per year and pay taxes on it so that you can't pass it on to your heirs is this super big premium gain in your life. They gave you preferential tax treatment, but they still want their tax money from your income. Depends on how you look at it, right? That's the dark way of looking at it. With that said, if you need to meet with a financial planner, contact me. Because this is the type of year where a financial planner pays for themselves. 
in the sense that taking a chunk out now might make sense for you. Like I said, if I were 10 years older, I'd probably take a, my, my RMD right now and wait for a correction and say, see, I knew I was right. Now, again, I don't want you playing that game, but I want you thinking that way, but I don't want you playing the game. I don't want you trying to guess what, where the market goes. But there's also common sense in saying it's been a good year. So later this year, if you wait till March or June, the market may be down 10%. And yeah, you're going to lose the capital gain, but you're also going to lose that plus 20%. It could happen. I'm not saying it will happen. I'm not trying to fear, put fear in deal. I'm saying this is where a financial planner pays for themselves. If you need a referral to a financial planner to review your situation, and I'm sending one out today, um, drop me an email. Go to my website, Rob Black Show. Say, hey, I heard on the radio that you'll review my situation for me. I'm in retirement. This is what I have. Do you think I'm okay? My big fear in life is you get to retirement and you mess it up. <clears throat> you don't have time to mess it up, in my opinion. That's when you want to get it right. White House is holding a COVID-19 response press conference right now. S&P 500 is dropping. Stocks are heading for a losing week on the Omicron fears. Job growth disappointed. We've hit what I would refer to as a difficult week where we got the fourth wave of Omicron coming loud and clear. Last week at this time, we were digesting turkey. Prime rib, if you're lucky. This year, we're looking and we're going, huh, let's think about this for just a second. What are we looking at for the next three months? And it doesn't look good because there's a very contagious virus going around. World Health Organization says COVID Omicron variant detected in 38 countries and that it's five times more contagious than Delta. In the next 10 days, we're going to start seeing the strong and the weak show up in hospitals. Our fingers are crossed that vaccinated and the boosters are working and make it less of, a, how shall we say, a death sentence for the, the elderly and the, the weak, the unvaccinated, they're the petri dish that we're looking at for sure, but we're also looking at the vaccinated at this time because the virus has mutated pretty aggressively to the point that it may not even recognize the vaccine in your body anymore. Again, all speculation until we get data in about five to 10 days. The IMF is telling the Federal Reserve, start buying back that debt, stop the inflation, curb the inflation, curb your enthusiasm, curb your inflation, right? I love that Larry David show. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Find me online at robblackshow.com.